Gan Shalom Makyam on give all praise and glory unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Raka Kadash. Double honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone who teach in real world and Shalom to the sincere Akyam from his truth and sincerity. Shalom. <coughs> so today I want to talk about the uh, the biblical biblical flood and how there are so many stories you know upon this earth you know being spoken about by all these different nations upon the earth that I want to bring out that the only ones that actually know what took place during the time of the great flood you know are the, the children of Israel man because the biblical flood that has been written in the scriptures you know in the Bible that of course also these Christians believe in etc you know is, is 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 where the judgment of the heavenly father is written down because uh you know Yahweh Yahushua who is the true power you know the true God upon his earth because all these other gods or the nations are nothing but idols you know he chose a particular people unto himself you know and, and, and the judgment of the heavenly father can be found for instance in the scriptures man so um First, I want to read a couple of things on the flood myth. That's how they call it. Of course, we understand that it's, uh, you know, it's something that took place and is a truth. And in modern day standards, a myth, you know, is just a story or a fairy tale. But if you would go into the um, the actual word, it goes into a, a story. It says myth. It says um, speech, thought, word, discourse, conversation, story, saga, tale, myth. Anything delivered by word of mouth. A word of unknown origin. Dix finds it quite possibly pre Greek. <coughs> so, myth is considered to be a story that is being told, you know, by, by word, uh, word by mouth, man. You know, and that you know, it's most likely what happened, you know, back in the days with all these other nations upon the earth. Because if we go into history as well, um, which we're going to touch on a little bit later in this. Um, in this video, the earth was repopulated you know, by the three sons of Noah. You know, and they were the ones that actually experienced the flood themselves. So what do you think that they did? You know, they were the ones to you know eventually, you know, spoke their you know experience of what happened, you know, to watch their children, man. But you know, I uh, I jumped the gun a little bit, but you know, this is uh, on Britannica. And it's concerned uh, concerning the, the biblical flood, but they call it myth, like I mentioned already. For the great deluge, it says flood myth, also called the deluge myth. Any of numerous mythologies in which a flood destroys a typically disobedient original population. Myths of a great flood, the deluge, are widespread over Eurasia and America. The flood, with a few exceptions, is an expiation by the water after which a new type of world is created. So here it talks about um, um, that there are stories of a great flood or the deluge that are widespread over Eurasia and America, man. And like I mentioned already, you know, all the people upon the earth, you know, they are descendants, you know, of, of Noah, man, of the three sons of Noah. So this is a, a list of the flood, you know, quote unquote myths, myth, myths <laughs> that we can find on the Wikipedia, for instance. You have them in America, North, Mesoamerica, South America. You have them in Asia, you know, China, Iran, India, Indonesia, Japan, Korea, Europe. You know, you have them. Oceania, which is Australia, Polynesia. You see, so you have all these, uh, all these different countries, nations upon this earth, countries and nations, you know, that talk about a uh, a great flood, you know, that took place, man. You know, whether it's, you know, um, told in a, in a story that is you know, quite, you know, mystical or, you know, quite like a, a fairy tale indeed, for instance, with Zeus, and those Greek and Roman and those Norse gods, or those idols, however you want to address them. But the original, the origin where it all came from, you know, it's the story that was being told by, you know, those that, um, that experience it themselves, man. 
and what actually took place back then you know can be found you know in the bible so reading on a little bit more in Britannica, it says biblical flood myth the biblical account of the deluge genesis 6 11 to 9 um verse 19 features noah as the hero of the flood story in his account noah is represented as the patriarch who because of his blameless piety was chosen by the most high to perpetuate the human race after his wicked contemporaries had perished in the flood a righteous man noah found favor in the eyes of the lord genesis 6 and 8 because when the most high beheld the corruption of the earth and determined to destroy it he gave noah divine warning of the impending disaster and made a covenant with him because we can read about you know noah was to make um was to make a you know a big boat for the ark you know in better terms you know and uh he prophesied you know for over a hundred years that the most i would bring rain would bring rain upon the earth and the people that heard him thought that he was crazy you know because it never rained before upon the earth man everything was watered by the dew of heaven man the dew that, that was created you know every morning before the sun rose up the people was like, now nah, you know, we don't believe you, man. But hey, when the time came that it started to rain, you know, the people were willing to listen to Noah and enter into the ark. But then it was too late. You know, and similar things is happening right now. Right now, we're trying to bid the people to the marriage. You know, our people, the Israelites, so the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, and those scared among the heathen nations, looking like the heathen nations. But his lineage does go back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, according to their father's seed line. And we're trying to bid those people back, you know, to Yahweh Hashem Yashai and warn them from the uh, impending danger that is to come, you know. But a lot of our people, they are they are stubborn and they don't want to listen. So when the time is there that the most that takes away his prophets, you know, and then all these things come to pass that we prophesied about, starting off with the other apostles, Jesus and down, you know, then they will be willing to listen. Man. But then it's going to be too late for them as well. So it says, um, Noah was instructed to build an ark, and in accordance with the Most High's instruction, he took into the ark male and female specimens of all the world's species of animals, from which the stocks might be replenished. Consequently, according to his to this narrative, the entire surviving human race descended from Noah's three sons and their wives. You see, and this is actually what happened, man. Everybody, his his descendants can be traced back you know, to eventually adam but in between that you know we have noah and his three sons it says the religious meaning of the flood is conveyed after noah's heroic survival having safely landed on mount ararat he then built an altar on which he offered burnt sacrifices to the most high who then bound himself to a pact never again to curse the earth on humanity's account well the thing is is that the pact that was being made between uh, noah and the most high that the most I would never flood the earth again. But you can also read in um <clears throat> what is it? Second Peter, Second Peter, the second chapter on the fifth verse. <clears throat> it says um uh, Second Peter two and five and spared not the old world, but saved Noah the eighth person. A preacher of righteousness bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. Uh, let me see. Nope. I need to go to. This is first Peter.
2 Peter 3, Salakia. So this is 2 Peter chapter 3, uh, in verse 5. For, for this they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of the Most High the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the waters and in the water. For by the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. You see, so back then the Most High used a flood, man, to destroy the earth. But it says, verse 7, but the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. So the next thing that the Most High is going to do is purge this earth of sinners. It's by way of thermonuclear missiles, man. <clears throat> Go back to the uh, Britannica. And it says, uh, the Most High then said a rainbow in the sky as a visible guarantee of his promise in this, in this covenant. Most have also renewed his commands, given the creation a few changes. I need to read this. I'm gonna read. Uh, humankind could now kill animals and eat meat, and murder would be punished by humans. Despite the tangible similarities of the Mesopotamian mythologies and biblical flood, the biblical story is a unique uh, biblical perspective. Uh, I'm not too sure about this these things, so I'm not read it, but you know. It says, um, it says, despite the tangible similarities of the Mesopotamian mythologies and the biblical flood, the biblical story has a unique Hebraic perspective. In the Babylonian stories, the destruction of the flood was the result of a disagreement among the gods, while in Genesis it resulted from the moral corruption of human history. The, prim the primitive polytheism of the Mesopotamian version is transformed in the, bi in the bi bi biblical story to an affirmation of the om omnipotence and benevolence of the one righteous power. And it's quite funny because the heavenly father Yahweh Basham Yahushai, he already existed before you know the Mesopotamian Empire, you know existed, man. You know because our forefather, you know um, Abraham, you know he um, he lived in the land of Ur, man. <clears throat> So let me see the location. So where was Ur of the Chaldees? This Ur of the Chaldees or the Chaldeans was a place in Mesopotamia and is mentioned four times in the Old Testament. It says, uh, Genesis 11 and 28 says that Haran, Abram's brother and Lot's father, died in Ur of the Chaldees, the land of his birth. So as Abram left Ur of the Chaldees and moved to Canaan, chapter 12 goes on to explain that his move was a result of the Most High's call to Abraham to leave his home and move to a new land that the Most High would one day give to his descendants. You see, so our forefather, Abraham, you know, he, he came out of, you know, Mesopotamia, man. So, the, the fact that there were people upon the earth after the flood, you know, creating a certain story, you know, about what happened with the great flood, you know, does not mean that their story, because it became because it came to in existence earlier, that that is the truth, man. Because what the Most High did, he he picked Abraham, you know, from among all these people that were upon the earth, and started to deal with him, and made promise unto him, you know, and 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 towards his seed, man. You know, who later became the Israelites, man, because the Most High he begot um, <clears throat> um. Abraham begat Isaac, and Isaac begat Jacob, man. And out of Jacob, you know, came the 12 patriarchs of the nation of Israel. And what did the Most High say 
in Psalms chapter 147, verse 19. It says, He showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. So the law, statute, commandments of the Heavenly Father, which are the righteous laws that should be kept, you know, was given unto the nation of Israel. Right? Verse 20, He hath not dealt so with any nation. So the Most High did not deal with, you know, like He dealt with us, you know, with these other nations, man. And as for His judgments, they have not known them, praise ye the Lord. So these other nations don't know the judgment of the Heavenly Father neither, man. And if you <coughs> look at the great flood that took place upon the earth, it was a judgment of the Heavenly Father, man. But all these other nations did not know it, man. So they come up with their own stories, you know, how things, you know, might have happened back then. But the true judgment of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, you know, that took place upon the earth, you know, that are written in the scriptures. You know, that's the judgment, judgment, those are the judgment of the Heavenly Father, man. It says, and they have not known them, and they don't know the, the judgments and the ways of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. But they come up with their own, own, own stories, man. Praise ye the Lord Yahweh. You see? <clears throat> it is the Mesopotamian flood myths as well. You know, other flood myths you have in Greek legend. Uh, Deucalion, the son of Prometheus, the fate of humankind. The Kolab of Noah, he said, I do the king of the gods, and will to destroy all humanity by a flood. Deucalion constructed an ark in which, according to one version, he and his wife rode out the flood and landed on Mount Parnassus. <clears throat> According to Indian flood mythology, the man Manu was the sole survivor of the great flood, combining the characteristics of the Hebrew Bible figures of Noah and Adam, the first man. You see, so <clears throat> all these other nations, they also came of uh, Noah, man. Because this is uh, Genesis 9 and 19. Let me start at verse 18. And the sons of Noah that went forth of the ark were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And Ham is the father of Canaan. These are the three sons of Noah, and of them was the whole earth overspread. <clears throat> so all the people upon the earth come from either Shem, Ham, or Japheth. Man. And for instance, you know, Shemitic people upon the earth are so called white people. You know, the Israelites, so called Negro, Latinos, and Native Americans. The Asian people. And with Asian, I mean uh, the Japanese and the Chinese. Ham are the actual Africans, you know, the people from Ethiopia, you know, the people from Eritrea, um, Somalia, uh, the actual South Africans. Uh, you also have the, the, the people from Kenya, you know, those type of people, man, Sudan. And the people from Japhetic are the Indonesian type of people, you see. So all the people upon the earth are descended from those people, man. You know, they, they have told their story, you know. Generation upon generation, man. You see? So that's where it all comes from. This is a uh, second Esther, chapter 6, and verse 54. And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all the creatures, of him come we all, and the people also, whom thou hast chosen. Man. So all the people upon the earth come of Adam. You know, then eventually, you know, most I pick uh, Noah, who was one of the descendants of Adam. You know, and, and then he had Shem, Ham, and Japheth, you know, but the, the people that the Most High chose, you know, was the nation of Israel, man. And unto them, you know, he gave, you know, the law, statutes, and commandments. You see, um, this is uh, Second Esther 5 and 27, and among all the multitudes of people, <clears throat> and among all the multitudes of people, thou hast gotten thee one people. And unto this people whom thou lovest, thou gavest a law that is approved of all. So of all the people that are upon the earth, the most I chose the nation of Israel, and the law such command was given unto them. You know, they also, you know, those people also, you know, the Israelites, they know, you know, the judgment of the Heavenly Father, and they be given the truth. What also happened, you know, uh, in the time of Noah, man. <clears throat> we have all kinds of things the Mesopotamia, Sumerian creation myth 
you know, it says Gilgamesh flood myth. You know, and even if you go to the Ab um, Abrahamic religions, you know, in Islam, you know, they say Noah had, had four sons, man. Which is uh, which is incorrect. You see, so he had he had four sons according to Islam, but the Bible says he has three, man. You see, so even though you know they have a story that's very similar, and from all these other um, nations upon the earth is the most and the closest to the truth. But it's still not the truth, man. And the people will find that out very, very, very soon, man. That Islam has not the truth, man. That the truth, you know, comes out of great millstone, man. Starting off with the outer parts of GMS unknown. You know? The doctrine that teaches about the you know the true Hebrew Israelites of the scriptures. You know, the talk about the ways of the Heavenly Father. So AR Jazai, you know this video was edifying. And with that, I want to give all praise and glory unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham of Kakadash. Double honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone for teaching real well. And Shalom to the sinister Akyom, Spanish truth and sincerity.